Hey, what's going on, internets, twitch.tv, YouTube, however you're watching. Thanks for making it. My name's Duke of the Bump. This is a game called Bastion. Uh, welcome to the chat room. Kibitz, Monothu, Namajim1, and Scared Helmet. Kibitz says, I'd rather go to sleep than wake up now. I'm not sure what he's... Oh. I guess he's responding to something Namajim said. Uh, let me type my secret passphrase into the chat room. And today's secret passphrase is... Uh, that's right, the... That's right, the mascara snake, fast and bulbous. There we go. Glad you guys can make it. Uh, this is going to be the new game plus of Bastion. I've already beaten him once. Oh, uh, welcome for the love of NES. Uh, if you haven't already played Bastion and you're planning to, then you probably don't want to watch the stream because this is going to be spoiler heavy, obviously, since I've already beaten the game once. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what the new game plus entails. I haven't actually started it yet. Uh, so this will be new and exciting for all of us. Nabajim says, oh crap, I haven't actually played it through. Oh well. Well, the really spo spoilery part isn't going to come until pretty much the very end, because there are two possible endings to the game. Basically, there are two decisions you can potentially make at the end of the game, uh, and which, which one you choose basically radically affects what the ending to the game is. And the reason I'm doing the new game plus is because I would like to see what the other ending entails. So, uh, I, I, doubt, I doubt I'll get there in this stream. Proper story is supposed to start at the beginning. Ain't so simple with this one. Now, I'm going to be uh, kid talking over the narration, which is another reason I was side. hesitant to, uh, to stream this game, because, uh, well, obviously, I don't hold a candle to this guy as far as narration quality goes. But, uh, I mean, otherwise, I wouldn't be talking for pretty much the entire episode. So, I left the, uh, the subtitles on, so you can still read the narration if you want to. Um,. Which is another which is another reason why if you're planning to play the game, I recommend playing it rather than watching the stream, because you really don't want to miss out on the narration. Like Navajim says, the narration is so awesome. Uh, so this is basically the uh, the intro slash tutorial. And uh, everything about this game is beautiful. The story, the art, uh, the music especially. I got the uh, the digital quali or the digital uh, soundtrack Ground the download I didn't actually buy the CD way. although I would it's Stop worth it um, and I've been listening to it just Find in my free time friend. and it holds up just excellently well, uh, welcome to the chat room Aramas mm -hmm. and this is the first weapon we get in the game the uh, I, I guess it's the name of the place is Ceylandia so I guess it's the sail hammer C-A-E-L and uh, we won't be using this weapon much after we get uh, after we get the next weapon upgrade. Um, he sees what's left of the rippling walls. Years of work undone in an instant. So yeah, if you're not familiar with the game, the narration is dynamic based on your actual actions in the game. Like if I spend a few seconds just randomly destroying some crap, then uh, the narrator will respond. Hopefully, let me see if I can get him to do it. possible that part doesn't come until later, but if you just spend a few minutes just destroying shit, the narrator says, and the kid just raged for a while. Uh, welcome to the chat room, Spader03. And uh, if you accidentally fall off the edge, oh you can't fall off the edge here, I guess that doesn't come until later in the tutorial section. But uh, how the narration changes based and on... Yeah. falls through his death. I'm just fooling. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. The narration is done by a guy named, uh... Oh god, of course I want to forget it for the stream. I just followed him on Twitter. He's a pretty cool dude. Logan Cunningham, that's it. And, uh, as I referred to him in a previous stream when I was talking about Bastion, he's pretty much the Morgan Freeman of video games. 
forced out from underground. Well, half Morgan Freeman and half Ron Perlman. He said uh, he was actually channeling Ron Perlman, I think. Oh, uh, he said something like that. He drew inspiration from Ron Perlman's uh, Fallout narration. You know, just war. War never changes. And there he just said, kid rages for a while. Isn't he just college age? Yeah, he's pretty young. I, I don't know exactly how young he is, but uh, he's not the uh, the old gentleman he portrays in the game. Sort of like Don LaFontaine. Yeah, uh, Don, La Don LaFontaine is actually fairly old at this point, if I remember correctly. Welcome to the chat room, Saya Chan. Glad you could make it. Now you can't actually uh, fall to your death, but if you do, if you fall, you do take falling damage, as I just demonstrated. Oh, Don LaFontaine passed away. I wasn't aware of that. Which ending did I get? Well, uh, just telling you that would be pretty uh, pretty spoilerific um, for everyone else. Uh, I went with uh, Zia's ending. The girls. Uh, basically, the narrator is a character who I'll actually be meeting. Uh, welcome to the chat room, Saul Scribe. And, uh, Merk Ritterwich, the guy whose name I can never pronounce. Kids worked up quite a thirst by now, so that fountain looks real inviting. Yeah, and this is the, uh, health fountain. Now, my health tonics, which you can see up in the top left hand corner of the screen, are all full. So, uh, using the fountain. Both, uh, it, it fills up your health and it replace, replenishes all of your, uh, your health tonics. And the fountains are actually pretty rare, uh, later in the game. Uh, welcome to the chat room, Rob Fava and Hyadator. I could have just said the end or the beginning. Uh, yeah, I went with, uh, with the end, I guess. Remember me? Yeah, sure I do. You, uh... You comment on YouTube shit all the time. I mean, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by the end or the beginning. That can be interpreted uh, multiple ways. Yeah, I can't remember which is the end or the beginning. The achievements are different between endings, basically. He sets foot inside one of Selandia's famous watering holes. And the story for this game is actually pretty cerebral. Um, I'm not going to comment on the actual story too much, because it takes... A lot of it is subject to interpretation. It kind of reminds me of Braid that way. Like, you, you're not really sure what's going on until the very end of the game. Or at least I wasn't. And even then, I wasn't 100% sure what the deal was, which is why I'm not really sure if you mean the end or the beginning. Currently playing Binding of Isaac. Sweet! Yeah, I thought uh, I've been playing that a bit too much in the stream recently, and uh, I thought I would give that a break. The, security the soundtrack for this game is so, so worth it. Yeah, definitely. It's ten bucks. And uh, this is the shield, which plays a huge role in the entire game. Uh, basically, you hold shift to block, and shift is also the lock-on key. So as you can see, the arrows pointing to the enemy there changes uh, when you... you Basically, when you have the, sh the shield out, you're both targeting and strafing. And uh, if you put the shield up at just the right time, then it does a counter-attack. Which uh, plays a huge role in the strategy of this game. And uh, at the very beginning here, the enemies are going to be just complete pushovers. Oh, I never showed off the gun, did I? Uh, you can hold shift, uh, space rolls, obviously, which I've been doing, and rolling does a little bit of damage to enemies. You can hold shift to target, and then you can hold down the right mouse key to use whatever gun you currently have equipped. And you always have a melee weapon and a gun equipped. Um, and when I first played the demo of this game, I picked up the fang repeater, and I was like, oh, well, this is going to be boring. All you have to do is hold shift, and just hold down... Well, at the time, it was the, the right trigger, because I was playing on the 360. That's uh, the right mouse button on the PC version. But I was like, oh, all you have to do is hold down these two buttons, and 
that's basically it. And, you know, there's no... And, you know, you have to dodge around a little bit. But uh, later in the game, there's so much more to the strategy than I gave it credit for. Uh, welcome to the chat room, Smart Man and Tub Helvet. Don't think I've seen you before. Welcome. Glad you can make it. How good are you at the dream challenges? Uh, I did all of the dream challenges. Well, I did the whole thing for the uh, the pipe, the first one you get, and I never even bothered with any of the other ones because. Uh, I wasn't really focusing on 100%ing the game or anything, I just kind of, uh, wanted to play through for the story. Um, thanks for buying Binding of Ice again. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I mean, like I said, a friend of mine bought me Binding of Ice uh, a few months ago, otherwise I might not have ever played it. So I was like, hey, I should, you know, pay it forward for good karma. Good luck if you ever do the old man's one. Yeah, um... Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really a hardcore, you know, ultra challenging kind of guy. At least as far as this game goes. There's story in the dream challenges, though. Yeah. He gets a good look yeah, that's true. Way down. I'll probably do those eventually, but not on stream because I don't want to just completely embarrass broke. myself. Still haven't beaten Binding of Isaac once. Well, you're probably in the same boat as a lot of people out there. I mean, it does take a lot of practice. I mean, I basically died, you know, 90 times. I, I basically died 10 times more more times than I've, uh, than I've actually beaten the game. Uh, welcome to the chat room, Polygamy. And, uh, we got a new ranged weapon. I said gun earlier, but really, you have a melee weapon and a ranged weapon. In this case, it's the, uh, the bow and arrow. And if you release the, the right mouse button at just the right time, it does One long a power shot, could lose an arrow, strong and which does extra damage. Does Binding of Isaac have death stats? Yeah. Uh, you can get the uh, the stat screen before you start the game. It tells you how many times you've died, how many times you've beaten the game, how many items you've unlocked, and uh, and you can watch all of the uh, the epilogues as well. Right the uh, the counter block is actually a really cool mechanic in this game. I mean, except for some enemies, you can almost beat the entire game without ever using a weapon or firing the, firing a shot if you really wanted to, just by blocking enemies' attacks. And it's not just ranged attacks either. You can do it with uh, melee attacks from enemies as well. The only thing you have to watch out for, though, is when you have enemies on multiple sides of you. It has a tendency to sometimes lock on to the wrong one, and you kind of have to maneuver maneuver around and be careful about that. Yeah, like a parry, exactly. The charge shot also pierces targets, so I didn't know that. Honestly, I never really used the bow that much either. My uh, big weapons, my preferential weapons in the game were the uh, the shotgun and uh, and the rifle. And then towards the end of the game, you get the uh, the calamity cannon. Oh, I'm supposed to use my uh, my special ability there. I forgot. You have a special. It's called a secret skill, which is activated by pressing the Q button. And right now, the only one I have is the uh, the whirlwind attack with the hammer. And using a secret skill consumes one of your black tonics. And again, I'm using the. Uh, the keyboard terminology, and uh, I figure, I imagine most people probably play this game on on the 360, and uh, I don't know. I like the mouse and keyboard controls a lot. I didn't think I would, but uh, but it actually works pretty well. I tried playing with the controller at first, and I was disappointed to realize that it only works with the 360 controller. It didn't. It doesn't work with my uh, my generic. Well, so it's, it's a PS2 controller connected to a generic USB adapter. But uh, mouse and keyboard actually works pretty well for me. The point I'm at, I like dagger and repeater. Uh, you mean the machete? The arsenal's I'm oh, not sure if there is a dagger, is there? The Duke, I think something is wrong with your adapter. 
Oh, uh, that reminds me. When I was playing Sonic CD, I said that uh, I said that it wouldn't work with my controller, and I realized what the problem is. Um, I tried my PS2 controller on Meat Boy. Yeah, it does work on Super Meat Boy. The games I was having an issue with were Sonic CD. Uh, God, what's the name of that game? My memory is just. It's a really stylized game where, where all the characters are silhouettes and you die, like, a lot. Anyway, I, I couldn't get it working with that, and I couldn't get it working with Sonic CD. But I realized that the problem with Sonic CD was that I had it plugged into the wrong port. My adapter has two PS2 ports on it, and I had it plugged into port 2 instead of port 1. But, I still can't get it to work with, uh, with either this game or... Yes, Limbo. God. Uh, I can't get it working with this game or Limbo. Which is fine for this game, because I... I honestly rather use a mouse and keyboard, but Limbo is the kind of game I'd rather use a controller for. Uh, welcome to the chat room, Sir Clean 189 This is the, uh, the arsenal, where we can change out our weapons, and as you can see, I have all my, all the weapons available to me since I've already beaten the game once. So, uh, yeah, we have the... I mean, technically, you can equip two, uh, two ranged weapons if you really want, I guess. But, uh, that's probably not a very good idea. Uh, I have... I, uh, I usually play with the, uh, the bellows equipped to that one, and the calamity cannon equipped to that mouse, to the right mouse button. Welcome to the chat room, Private Steve. I think I tried it with Bastion and it didn't work, so there you go. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of unfortunate, but like I said, with this game, I'm fine with the mouse and keyboard. Yeah, it was the machete. Yeah, the machete's good. My uh, my go-to melee weapons are the fire bellows and the machete, and my go-to ranged weapons are the uh, the army carbine and the calamity cannon. And I'll, I'll probably switch it up a little bit. Uh, welcome to the chat room, Monkey Man Eight and Daza W. And these are the secret skills you can equip. There are generic secret skills, and then there are secret skills that are specific to what weapons you're using. So since I'm using the fire bellows, I like the ring of fire, which is kind of a, uh, a big uh, AOE attack. I can't get used to the cannon, still love the mortar. Actually, I might not want to use the cannon, because I, I mean, I assume it still has all my upgrades. Yeah, it does. When you first get the calamity cannon, it's kind of uh, hard to control, because... It, when when you first get the cannon, it charges a shot, and then it fires in its own rhythm. You, you can't sit here and hold it like this. But uh, once you upgrade the Calamity Cannon, then uh, you can charge it and hold it as long as you like, pretty much. And uh, this is like a rocket launcher attack. Uh, it does flash damage, which does affect you if you're too close. Uh, I have beaten all of the weapon challenges except for the Machete, the Pike and the Calamity Cannon. Uh, I think those are the only ones. One sip of the spirits this is the Distillery. The uh, these are uh, passive benefits that you can equip. Uh, there are different spirits that you can equip. And uh, every time you level up, you can equip one more. And as you can see, playing through the whole game once, I've only made it to level 6, which is another reason I wanted to do the New Game Plus. The Proving Grounds are besting me. Yeah, I can't do any of the Time Trial ones. Um, I, I suck at those. And I can't do the Calamity Cannon one. Um, all the others, uh, it took me a few tries, but I could get first place on all the other ones. The only one I got first at was the Breaker Bow. Yeah, that was uh, the first one I got first place in. So I'm going to equip... Let's see, what was I using? Uh, I, I'm not going to go through each one of these. Uh, the Bastion Bourbon is a must. Uh, it makes it so when you use a health tonic, it fully restores your health instead of only restoring it. Uh, I think the default is like, it's either 33% or 50% or something. And you can hold two extra health tonics. So, yeah, Spirits provide passive bonuses. So that's a must. And then there's another one, a Black Rye, which does the same thing for Black Tonics. You can hold two more of those. So that is very important. Um, 
Cinder Brick Stout is pretty good. Uh, it makes it so when you block with your, your shield, it doesn't slow you down. Uh, I always have that one equipped. Wow, the Breaker Bow one took you an hour? That's, uh... It didn't take me that long. Uh, I did have to retry it a few times. There's one tonic that makes health ton one of the spirit that makes health tonics restore less. That is cancelled out by the tonic that restores 100%. See, I wasn't sure that actually cancelled that out or not. Uh, he's talking about the, uh... Uh, let's see, which one is that? Oops, shit. Plus 15 damage resistance. Yeah, I'll probably take that one. Oh, and I like the Stapson. And then there's the Squirt Cider, just increases your max health. Increase critical hit chance when you're at full health. Where Whiskey was at it? No, 100% critical hit chance, but only when you're below 33%. Uh, let's see. Huh. Apparently I don't have that one, that's weird. There should be a ta um, a spirit that when you equip it, uh, health tonics restore less, but you restore health every time you attack an enemy. I think I think it was in the shop, and I saw it, but I never actually bought that one, because I didn't, uh, I didn't plan on actually using it. Uh, so for the last spirit here, I'll just use the... Uh, uh, welcome to the chat room, Cheezins. Might have to buy it for the dist distillery. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's the case. Actually, a couple of these are new. I, I think you unlock this one and this one by beating the game. Uh, basically, uh, if you die, then you have one extra life, quote unquote. Uh, this one gives you plus twenty five percent damage, but it re it takes away your extra life. So if you die at all, then you have to start that area completely over. And then there's a lifeline, which basically gives you another extra life. Survive an attack that would have brought defeat. Already 19 people in the stream. Yeah, they're, uh, they've been streaming in lately. Um, I think having... Uh, I'm just going to take the plus 10 max health. That's good enough. I think having the, uh, the Twitter and the Facebook are really helping people uh, like stay updated when I'm streaming. This is the uh, the fire bellows, which is pretty cool. It does a, uh, a little burst here, but once uh, once it's out of fuel, you have to wait for the fuel to recharge. But it does pretty significant damage, and it's uh, very effective against armored enemies. And then this is the calamity cannon, which does a shit ton of damage. But yeah, if any of you aren't following me on uh, Twitter and Facebook, YouTube and Twitch. Any of those services that you use. Oh, hey, Perpetual Ascent. Finally made it to one of these. I appreciate it. And uh, welcome... Who was that? Oh, uh, Perkle566. Welcome to you as well. An old ferry barge sends the kid on his way. Oh, shit. The bastions I forgot you actually get attacked by enemies here. So we're on this, uh, this sky boat, being attacked by these turrets on all sides. But, yeah, the very beginning of this game is going to be extremely easy, because I have all the broken indie game weapons, and these are all the easy enemies. Now there are, uh, there are idols that you can equip for different gods, and when you uh, equip the idols, uh, that'll be... I'll come to that part a little bit later. When you equip them, they each have an effect that makes the game a little bit harder, but it increases the experience you get. Uh, I, it varies based on what the idol is. Uh, welcome, Wars Draconis. But, uh, see, I just did splash damage to myself there. But uh, I'll probably tr try equipping some of those idols just because I didn't have much difficulty with this game the first playthrough. Like, I only actually died, I think, once. And by actually die, I mean I lost my extra life and I died and I, I had to start the area over. So yeah, not the hardest game ever. Uh, that's a chunk of something heavy, which we can use to upgrade the, uh, 
upgrade the hammer. And these are scumbags, which when you first get here, they are challenging, but now with the Calamity Cannon, you know, they're nothing. Oh, and this is the secret skill that I equipped, the uh, the Fire Bellows one. And it does a, a nice little fire burst. These big guys are actually pretty bad because uh, every time they attack, they take out a little chunk of the floor. I think I think it's actually not possible to to counter block these guys like their attacks too strong. Oops. And uh, these little shards are the currency of the game. Uh, you use them to unlock weapon upgrades and uh, buy things from the shop and stuff. In case someone hasn't played Bastion yet, they should. Just go out, buy it, and sit through the whole game in one go. Yeah, I agree. Um, anyone who's planning on playing this game should probably not watch the stream, because the, it's the kind of game best experienced. Oops. I clicked out of the, uh, the window. And this is one of the, uh, one of the running away portions of the game where the ground's kind of falling out from under your feet. I think. Yeah, it is. And you just kind of have to rush through. And just ignore the enemies firing on you. And again, the narration is much better than anything, any narration I can provide. So, this is, uh, I mean, this is mostly for my own enjoyment, and for anyone who's like, anyone not interested in actually playing the game, and anyone who's already beaten the game. For some reason, if you're like, right next to an enemy, and you use the Calamity Cannon, it doesn't do the splash damage on you. And I'm not really sure why. It like, it only does that if you hit an obstacle with it, I think. One of the very rare games that had a good story and the narrator is boss. Yeah, the story of this game is awesome. Now the kids see something strange. Just take it at my own pace and enjoy. Yeah, I know. I'm uh I'm too Did anybody else survive? Too worried about pleasing people, I guess. Sure enough, you find another. So uh, I have some good news. Oh, this is the narrator. This is uh There's a bit of the Bastion's power on that crest. Enough to point the way to the cores. There are different uh, topics that you can talk about, and he just gives information about the Bastion. Then watch. I might drop when I get to a point that I haven't gotten to yet. Yeah, and, and that's cool. Anyone who wants to play the game, you know you should. Uh, let's see. It's like Secret of Mana, the Western. Yeah, kinda. I definitely see parallels in this game to to the Mana series. But I mean, the Mana series is pretty bad, except for like Secret of Mana, and uh... And, I mean, the rest of the series is okay, but Secret of Mana is the only like, really good one. Have I played Demon Souls? No, not yet, but I'd like to. Legend of Mana. Yeah, I, I've heard mixed things about Legend of Mana. Just like that, the Bastion comes alive. Starts growing again, growing stronger. Kids gotta put its power to good use. Now, since I'm starting a new now game, I don't have farther. all of the uh, the things in the Bastion that I unlocked. I'm gonna have to unlock all of those again. Uh, every time you find a core, you can add one new section to the Bastion. And the first thing, we only have one option available to build, and that is the. Uh, well, actually, we can we can build any of them that we want. Uh, I'm gonna go on ahead and build the shrine, just because I never really messed around with it in the actual game, and I'd like to uh, like to see what my options are here. These are all uh, monuments to various gods, uh, and each of them, like I said, has a different effect and gives you. Well, this one doesn't actually give you a bonus; it just makes the game more difficult. So I wouldn't equip that one. No bonus, no bonus. Oh, that's what I currently have equipped. So when I activate that one, 
uh, as you can see, my uh, my shards increase by 10% and my experience increases by 10%. And the more you equip, the greater the uh, the greater the benefit is. If I equip all of them, it's 75%, which is pretty significant. But uh, I don't know what most of these do, so I'm not going to actually do that. Let's see, foes strike with greater ferocity. Foes shall have vengeance in the throes of defeat. I guess that means you, uh, when you kill an enemy, they explode or something. Foes shall induce sloth with each, with each strike. That doesn't sound good. Foes shall grow quicker to move and strike. Foes gain resilience to physical harm. Foes shall cause, cause harm on physical contact, means, meaning you can't touch them. Foes shall never yield health tonics or black tonics. Wow. That's only a 10% bonus, too. Don't think I would equip that one. Foes shall regenerate from any injury. Foes shall sometimes turn to air, unable to be hit. Huh. And foes shall deflect attacks on a whim. Sounds pretty tough. Secret of Mana is this game, but with, di but with swords and different abilities. I, I don't know if that's true. I mean, I like both games, but I wouldn't really... I mean, they're similar in theme, but the gameplay is pretty different. <sighs> Alright, so I'm not sure which of these I'm actually going to activate. Uh, this one sounds like something I can potentially deal with. Uh... Foes shall gain resilience to physical harm. Okay. That, that doesn't sound too bad. Just take more damage to kill. Uh, strike with greater ferocity. Okay. Well, let's start with these and see how much worse that makes the game. No action RPG had done anything like Secret of Mana and pretty much all, all use aspects of a sense. Yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty unique for the time. Regeneration and resilience. That sounds really tough. Yeah, well, I'm uh, I'm a risk taker. Uh, this is the, the home base. You can get information on each of these areas. Ceylonia is safe haven. Once the highest point. Actually, this is this is the uh, the tutorial area that we cleared. The wharf district, and then this is the bastion. This is the first proving round that you unlock, which I. Uh, I probably won't go through these in the new game plus. And then this is the first actual level to the game. And, uh, pretty big map as you can see. Secret of Evermore was great as well. It's not bad, but you can tell it's American made. I never actually played Secret of Evermore. It looks pretty similar to Secret of Mana. Okay, well, let's go ahead and fly to the first area here. Now he lands at the intersection between bad and wrong. I asked Perp had to run. Oh well. one of these twisted streets. But which one? So, uh... For the squirt steps. Won't be no we basically have, uh, three different branching paths that we can take here. Now these green ones are like the blue ones, but they are not aggressive. They kind of run away from you. And the reason I can't do the machete proving rounds is because it's full of those little things. And I'm just not quick enough to uh, to catch up to all of them and kill them before time runs out. And my uh, bellows making uh, pretty short work of these little guys. And I'm just showing off that you can uh, you can do a counter on melee attacks as well, since I haven't done it yet. And also, uh, even if you don't do a counter attack, the enemies are still kind of confused, stunned for a second, which you can see by the little spinning things over their head. Hope they'll never see one again. Am I going to stream LP Shadowrun on the Genesis? No, probably not. Um, just because. It's an RPG, and I'm not really, you know, good enough to make that kind of thing entertaining. Um, if you want an LP of Shadowrun, like I mentioned in the last stream, I recommend uh, checking out Grimith R on YouTube. He did an excellent LP of Shadowrun. He keeps telling himself he better watch his step.
So uh, we're looking for the core, and there's there isn't one down this path, but we found the Squirt Lore, which is a uh, it's a secret skill that we can use that uh, summons a friendly Squirt that uh, attacks some of the enemies for us. At least the kid got something for trouble. Oh, and there is a uh, the machete is down this path as well, which I don't need because I already had it unlocked, but. I can't actually uh, equip it yet because I haven't, uh, I haven't gotten the arsenal and the bastion yet. I really hate the lemon mishap item. Probably the worst item in Binding of Isaac. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of the uh, throwaway items that I don't think anyone really uses it. Uh, welcome to the chat room, Sorthom. Haven't seen you in a few streams. And the machete is just a uh, a fast melee weapon, very fast. And uh, right now it's critting a lot because I uh, I upgraded it with some abilities that increases the uh, the crit chance. And I guess those are still applied, even though I don't have the uh, the forge yet. Uh, this is the uh, oh shit! I can't stand in that blue stuff. Uh, this is a squirt lore. It's just one of those little squirts with hearts hovering out over it, so you know it's friendly. There he is, the oldest scumbag of them all, Gershaw. This is kind of the boss of this area, uh, a large version with of the scumbag, which, with my current weapon, uh, my current equipped Gershaw weapons, you know, isn't a problem at all. Oh yeah, you can also throw the machete by holding down the button. And you can do the same uh, power attack that you can with the, the bow by releasing the button at just the right time. Which I'm not great at. You can also throw it if you didn't somehow upgrade that out. Yeah, yeah, you can always throw the machete. There's no, uh... There's no upgrade that negates that ability. So, uh, I have some good news. Um, today was our last day of overtime at work. So, uh, hopefully, barring any unforeseen uh, catastrophes, I won't have to skip any more days or, uh, or delay the stream or anything like that. Oh. That's an upgrade item for the uh, machete. And uh, now that we're done with overtime, I'll probably start doing the stream earlier. Uh, either 4 or 5 p.m. So either 2 or 3 hours earlier. I haven't decided yet. Just to make it a little easier for, uh, for people in other time zones. But yeah, that is, uh, that's definitely good news because... I mean, I volunteered for it. It was they're not they weren't forcing us to do the overtime yet, but uh, you know I figured yeah you know, the additional money is just a bonus, and you know my job's easy as shit, so why not? But uh, it's been annoying, but it's over now. Sometimes when, when I get hit, you can see the, these little spikes fly out from me, and that's because of the uh, the stab synth that I equipped, the spirit. Uh, every time I get hit, it does the uh, does that little counter attack. Oh shit! Almost like a Occasionally, when you get hit, you see a little. Uh, it says space recover. And if you hit space, you can, uh, it, it kind of undoes the stunning a little bit when you hit by a powerful attack like that. See, you can't even block that attack, much less do a counter on it. But if you hit space, then you can recover, and it's easier to, uh, like, you are knocked down for a second. I'd probably just hang out down here and use the Calamity Cannon. And now there's a new If I want to cheese them. Whoa. Why are these guys friendly? Uh, welcome to the chat room, Fox. 
And we got the core for this area. He has the whole place grown, but it's too tough to fall. Might as well check the other side streets before leaving this hole. Yeah, there's one other street that we uh, we haven't gone down yet. I just killed that dude with uh, with counter blocks. You killed their leader, so you, so they surrendered. Ah, okay. Yeah, I'm not I'm not even paying attention to the. Uh... Black gas fellas all dress alike. Kids wondering the same oh. thing. I got one of the uh, the achievements apparently. There's a, a monument with different in-game achievements that you can uh, achieve, and when you get them, you uh, once you claim the achievement, it gives you a certain amount of money for each one. And I uh, at some point apparently I got the achievement for deliver a single crushing blow to a foe for at least 70 damage, which I don't know when that happened. And this is a, a, mem a memento. It's basically just a uh, a story piece. And then this shows all of the other items that I have at this point. The spears that I have equipped and the uh, weapon upgrade items. Lemon mishap and chocolate milk. Yay, great floor. Yeah, uh, those are two of my least favorite items in the game, too. I hate the lemon mishap and I hate the chocolate milk. Oops. <laughs> Oh well. Apparently chocolate milk plus br brimstone is really terrible now. Well I still haven't actually had a chance to use a brimstone so I'm not sure how it was before. Damn. Even this guy does the uh... That guy does the, uh, the powerful attack too apparently. Sometimes you can, uh, you can blow up those enemy bosses before the enemy spawn. So you can just take them out without having to actually fight them. Uh, welcome to the chat room, Oxbo. Glad you can make it. Inside the forge, he can fine tune those instruments of his. And this is where you uh, you upgrade the weapons. Uh, these are the different materials that you have. The star means that I upgraded this all the way. Uh, these are the the upgrades that I have equipped to the hammer right now. I, I guess this is, this is why I got that achievement. <laughs> Moore's Draco has just, just dropped half an awesome coconut cream pie on the floor. Four dollars down the drain. That sucks. So wait, the, the, does that mean the whole pie costs you eight dollars? That's pretty expensive for a pie. Uh, but yeah, I, I have the damage upgrade, uh, focus attack, more damage upgrade, attacks using more armor, more damage upgrade. Yeah, I guess that explains why I got that achievement. <laughs> Five second rule. Got it on sale for five dollars. So if you drop half the pie, that means you only have lo you only lost two dollars and fifty cents, which isn't that bad. And uh, I fully upgraded the machete as well, and the uh, the army carbine. Now you can't actually choose your weapons here. You have to do that at the uh, the armory, which I'll probably unlock shortly after I make it back to the bastion. Five second rule definitely does not count with pie. Luckily, I have another one. Just gotta wait for it to thaw. Yeah, you always want to buy a backup pie. You never know when something like this might happen. Never much cared for that big wide grin of his. In fact, I usually buy three or four pies, you know, just to be absolutely safe. Because, I mean, you never know. Hey. Hey, you. Attack me. Haha. Uh -huh. There's an uh, achievement for killing an enemy with a counterattack while you're at 20% uh, health or less. Which I haven't done yet. Emergency pie. That is a money making idea. Yeah, you can have like a, uh, like a refrigerated glass case that says, in case of emergency, break glass and retrieve pie. Alright, uh, I, I guess I'm done here, so I'll just, uh, just, just hoof it back to the bastion. And by hoof it, I mean I will be thrown through the air just like I knew he would the core hums in his pack the monuments calling for it 
The windbags used to be alright. Then the calamity took the floor. Oh, Hyenator beat Mom. Congratulations. I remember the first time I beat Mom. It was a momentous day indeed. Oh, we got this, uh, this friendly squirt for, uh, I guess we're getting the squirt lore. They're little, uh, just little fun things that you can add to the Bastion to give it some, some character. So I will put this piece of the core into the monument, and uh, we can build one of our other Bastion upgrades now. I can get the Forge, which is the one that you just saw that lets you upgrade weapons. I can get the Lost and Found, which lets you buy stuff. The Memorial is the one where you uh, you unlock the uh, the achievements. And then the Arsenal is where you actually choose what weapons you want to use, and then the Distillery is where you, uh, you equip your spirits, like I did at the beginning of the game. Do I not get to go to the Womb? Nope. The Womb does not unlock until after you beat Mom once. Get the distillery. Well, I don't know. Have I actually gone up a level? Because at the moment, I think the uh, the arsenal would be more useful to me. Although I'm pretty happy with my weapon load, honestly. I guess I don't really need to change that. All right, I'll get the t distillery. Yeah, I haven't gone up a level yet, but uh, when I do, I can start equipping more spirits. Stab synth is like drinking a cool breeze. Just don't go spitting needles everywhere. <laughs> Stab synth. I love that. I think you have a new elixir. Do I? I don't think so. I think I just had the uh, the little exclamation point on there because I just built the, uh, the distillery. Or can buy one. Well, once I get the lost and found, then there are going to be more spirits there that I can buy. Are people having issues with the chat room today? I keep seeing people pop in and then leave. This track is awesome. Yeah, the whole soundtrack is awesome. I've been listening to it uh, pretty frequently at work. And, you know, just when I'm walking or whatever. Oh, Mike, uh, were you able to get the car fixed? I meant to ask you... I am you at work today and asked, but I didn't see you online all day. When uh, when we were driving to work this morning, the uh, Mike's car just randomly died <clears throat> died in the middle of traffic, and uh, it was an issue with his his battery connector or something. I'm not sure if he's uh, not sure if he was able to get that fixed or not. If not, I guess I'm walking to work in the morning. Which isn't a big deal. It's only like a a 30 minute walk, but I mean, he passes by my house, you know, on the way to work anyway. Alternator died. Well, that sucks, dude. Is that uh, had to buy a new one? Wow, how much was that? Okay, we have two potential places we can go uh, to get the next core: the melting pot or the sundown path. I will go to the to the melting pot. Won't be fixed until tomorrow or maybe Saturday. Damn. Better days. Well, at least it's something easily fixable. Oh, you can see my uh, the, the idols that I have equipped down there at the bottom of the screen. So far, the extra difficulty isn't too. Oh man, I totally forgot that uh, I had the machete equipped, because I would have wanted to switch back to the bellows. Oh well. Machete's fine. I found something nasty. I got my, uh, my new microphone in the mail today. Or, in the mail, I, I, it was UPS, not the Postal Service, but same difference. Unfortunately, I haven't gotten my mixer yet, so I have no way to uh, to connect it to my computer. But uh, it looks very professional. Oops. So what does New Game Plus do for this game? Well, basically, you just start over from the beginning with, uh, with all of your weapons and stuff already unlocked, and there are more uh, spirits that you can equip and more idols that you can equip in the... Uh, 
uh, the altar or whatever. It, it does. Uh, it lets you keep all your upgrades. It does give you a few extra upgrades. But the, the main reason I'm playing through New Game Plus is to get the ending to the game that I didn't get the first time I played. Those fancy cages. No break in a cage like that. And this is another secret game. skill, the trip mine. Gotta find a way to spring it. Basically, it's a. Uh, oh, these are like prickly cactus things that deal damage to you if you walk into them. It throws a switch. Now what could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong indeed? Quite a bit, as it turns out. The cage starts lifting from the core ever so slow. All kick do -ba -do -do -do. Just wait. Shipping start falling in. This is the uh, the trip mine. You just set it down and when enemies walk into it, it explodes. Not every squirt's born bad. Some spring to the kid's defense. Oh, there are squirts fighting on my behalf. Just That's pretty cool. Oops. It's gonna take a little while. But yeah, new microphone looks good. Um, I got basically the best reviewed microphone on Amazon that wasn't ridiculously expensive. Uh, it cost me about 50 bucks. Which was marked down from like 150 bucks. Uh, it's a brand that I never heard of. It's called CAD or CAD, but uh, it has four and a half stars on Amazon, and uh, everyone seems to have had a real positive experience with it. So once I get my mixer, hopefully better heal. Hopefully the sound quality of my streams will increase. I mean, hopefully it's already a little bit better because I uh, I paid the license for the. Uh, for the streaming software. Maybe five more minutes. Maybe thirty. On the and once I get the mixer, if Mike wants to, uh, he can come over and we can do uh, we can do streams locally without it sounding like total ass like it did before. Squares get real territorial around the core. So yeah, should be pretty cool. Oh shit. I think I'll just stay off in this corner. Well, that's not going to work. This dude's going to keep throwing blue shit at me. Damn it. Guess I should start laying some of these mines, huh? As you can see, this game can get pretty ridiculous with all the shit on the screen. This is uh, significantly harder with the uh, with the uh, the idols that I have equipped. The best way I can describe the soundtrack to this game is like industrial Americana. Like, it has Wild West themes, and like, old blues themes, mixed with like, almost Nine Inch Nails sounding kind of stuff. Alright, I might have to uh, unequip some of these, some of these idols, because this shit's getting pretty ridiculous. I think I will lay a mine there. kind of wish I still had my, uh... My circle of flames. Oh well, when I get back uh, to the bastion, I'll equip my fire bellows again and get the the weapon uh, loaded out that I'm used to. He's got it. Just gotta get to the nearest barge. Oops. You know what? I'm out of here. Forget you guys. I was going to try to stay and try to kill everything, but nah. That sucks. Game forcing him to use other weapons. Yeah, I mean. I still remember the look on his face after that. I mean, really, I don't even have to pick up the weapons when I'm doing the new game plus, since I already have them. It would probably be best if I just didn't even bother picking them up. 
It was good living here for a while. Oh, I guess you do have to pay so much to progress the plot, though. As Mavagem says. I'm not doing the 10 idle run yet. Yeah, I don't think I want to do that. Uh, that's not going to... Uh, that's not going to be a good time. Looks like the controls are way better on the PC than the 360. Yeah, I mean, I enjoy them. Um, really, it comes down to personal preference. I thought I wouldn't like the PC controls, but uh, once you get used to it, it's pretty pretty good. The magic mushroom is my favorite item so far. Hyenator talking about uh, Binding of Icy. That is definitely a good one. All right, let's uh, let's build. Well, I will add the core to the monument. Finished, but the new world is just getting started. More Draconis underwhelmed with Diablo 3 in the chat, and uh, I haven't played much, but so far I agree with him. I got a guest pass thanks to, uh, and I'm blanking on the name. Wow, my memory is just something else today. Uh, but thank you for the guest pass. See, he's not in the chat room. I would have recognized his name. Chanticleer. That was it. Uh, I got a guest pass thanks to Chant Chanticleer. And I downloaded the uh, the 8 gigs last night after uh, after the stream. And I only had a chance to play very briefly before, uh, before I had to go to bed. But, uh... Yeah, that is a Diablo-ass Diablo game. I mean, it is like Diablo 2, but... Some people say streamlined, some people say dumbed down. I think it's a combination of both. I'm playing a monk. And, uh, I mean, I'm enjoying the class, but, uh... I'll try one more level with the idols like, equipped. That was like a, uh... I think that last area you were honestly kind of supposed to run. Like you were supposed to grab the core and get on the ship as soon as possible, which I didn't do. I was trying to, uh, to kill everything in the room. Somebody gets to the core before the kid. But yeah, I'm having fun with the monk class, but... I went up like three levels in the brief amount that I played. And I really hope that's not all there is to the leveling in that game. Because it completely removes any of the decisions you make when you upgrade your, uh, when you up level and you, uh, you unlock new skills and stuff. It's just kind of a straight linear path, which, if, it, if it's always like that, then, uh, that would be pretty disappointing. Because it loses much of its, uh, much of the strategy, if that's all there is. I do like the health pickups so that you don't have to constantly manage potions. Um, I think that is a... That is streamlining, it's not dumbing it down, because honestly juggling potions in Diablo 2 was always pretty lame. Um, I haven't decided at this point if I'm actually going to buy the game or not, once I'm done with the, uh, the guest pass, the demo content, but uh, probably not. I will probably wait until Torchlight 2 comes out and uh, give that a chance. Hopefully there's a demo for that. Things getting kind of tough in this area because uh, the floor is just randomly falling, as you can see. You know, in a, lo in a lot of ways, this game reminds me of Diablo, but in instead of loot, there's actual strategy to the weapons and stuff. It's just not just like a, it's not a mindless click fast. Wow, it's, it's dropping me in horrible locations. That sucks. Oh well, still doing pretty good on the uh, on the health potions here. Oxbow got his for free. I'd probably play Diablo 3 if I got it for free. Twice about 
I probably shouldn't have gone down there. Yeah, I mean, this game isn't much like Diablo. But, I mean, there are similarities. I mean, it had the same uh, kind of isometric perspective. Now, I haven't tried the multiplayer for Diablo 3 yet. I've just been, uh, I mean, I just very briefly... The control scheme makes a huge difference, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely, I mean... I was just saying, you know, going from a game like this to Diablo 3... Diablo 3 just doesn't seem as fun. But yeah, I haven't done any of the multiplayer yet, so maybe that's fun? I don't know. And as for the whole always online stuff, at first, I kind of went with the general uh, internet opinion that it sucks, that you always have to be online even when you're playing single player. But I kind of look at it differently now. Um, Travel always was. Diablo 2 was a single player game that can also be played multiplayer. But uh, as Rob Father in the chat says, Diablo 3 is a multiplayer game. I mean, it was built for multiplayer straight up. It's just a, it's a multiplayer game that allows you to play single player if you want to. And it's kind of like World of Warcraft in that respect, more so than uh, more so than the previous Diablo the games. I mean, with World of Warcraft, you can solo. You don't have to play with other people. But, I mean, if you do that, obviously you still have to be online. And, uh, the, I mean, they're just taking the same strategy with Diablo 3. And really, I can't blame them for that. What does one cube of meat do? Block, yeah. When you have one cube of meat, all it does is, uh, is block projectiles. I played it alone for the story. In multiplayer, you have people rushing, rushing, killing bosses before you get there, etc. Yeah, that's always my problem with those kinds of games. I mean, if I was going to play a game like Diablo 3 multiplayer, it would only be with people... Like, people the same level as me, who, uh... People the same level as me, who aren't going to, like, rush through the game like that. Because I don't really think that's fun. Personally. I don't know. I probably won't end up playing Diablo 3. I'll make it through the, uh, the guest pass. And unless I see something that, like, really blows me away, I just can't see myself actually buying the game. Wow. I am getting rocked. Jesus. So, uh, I mentioned in the stream last night, but just in case anyone missed it, um, the expansion for Binding of Isaac, Wrath of the Lamb, comes out on the 28th, and I actually have that day off work. It's like Memorial Day or Labor Day or something. One of those made-up holidays. And, uh, I thought I would do a, uh, a special Monday stream. Stream it as soon as it's available. I think that would be pretty cool. So, uh, anyone interested in seeing what that looks like, you know, come and check it out. May 28th is my birthday. Oh, no happy early birthday to Hyena. My birthday is, uh, let's see. Five days after that. So, yeah, Wrath of the Lamb is a pretty good early birthday present to me. I love the Calamity Cannon. I thought you were a Gemini. I am a Gemini. June 3rd. Even gas, fellas. Wait, how, how did you know I'm a Gemini? 
That's kind of creepy. When, when have I uh, made that information public? Say I sound like one? How do you sound like a Gemini? I mean, obviously, astrology is a uh, a not real thing with uh, with you know no actual real world applications. Well, he got me pegged regardless. <sighs> um, I have to use the restroom. I apologize. I'll be right back. Wow, I've already been at this for an hour? It's crazy. It doesn't feel like I've done that much. Hyenator got the skeleton key. Awesome. Alright, uh... Oops, shit. Resume game. I just played a Doom mod that's really crazy, says Navajum. Is it that, uh, that extreme Doom mod that I keep hearing about? All this toil, kid keeps coming back to an overwhelming question. So that looks pretty fun. The one that gives you an assault it's rifle instead of a pistol. Calamity. Randomizes all the weapons with weapons from different FPSs. Wow. Different monsters from different games. So didn't what is it? Just all like old it games, like stuff. uh, like Heretic and Hexen and stuff. Like, I guess those aren't id games technically. They're uh. Did I not get the core? I think I forgot to pick up the core. It says I cleared the area. Oh, right, the uh, the cord was missing for that one. There's weapons from Quake 1 and 2. Okay. Doom question from last night carried over. Any way to enter a mouse look command in the original Doom like you can in Quake? Um... I'm sure there is in the console, but I would what I would recommend is using a different front end for Doom, like use uh, Z Doom or something, uh, or uh, Doom Legacy, because that lets you configure all the stuff in uh, a GUI instead of having to use a console, and it's just way way easier to do it that way. I mean, it just takes the uh, oops the WAD files from Doom and uh, drops them into a. Uh, Basically, just a uh, a new GUI with like a few graphical upgrades and stuff. These folks never saw the calamity coming. Doom Legacy is the one I should play. Uh, I I had fond memories of Doom Legacy. Uh, the one everyone raves about is Z Doom, though. Yeah, Navigem says Legacy is way outdated. Yeah, it was years ago when I used Doom Legacy. Z Doom or G Z Boom? Someone like him. 
Something so familiar about that man. It's a snag or two trying to get to him. He ain't about to stop, no matter what. Got so many questions after all. Yeah, Morris, uh, Navajim and I were thinking we should find a, uh. Crap! What skill do I have equipped? Oh, it's, it's the mine. I forgot to re equip the, uh. Re equip the, uh, the fire spread thing. Uh, but Navajim and I were thinking we could find a good co op Doom mod. And stream that one of these days. Just ain't got time for answers. I mean, there's a billion Doom mods out there. There's got to be a few that are good for co-op. The mod was called Aeons of Death. The Thunder Brothers didn't make it. I feel really bad for rushing through the story in this they game for anyone who hasn't played it yet. I mean, I hope... I hope I turn people on in this game, because it's really quite good. The Jaws, they didn't make it. I think it's either 10 or $15 on Steam. So definitely... check it out. I've seen Doom Clock before somewhere. I think it was Half Blind Gamer in the Netherlands. Well, I'm not sure if uh, Vanilla Doom would really be that good for co-op, but, uh... I mean, I'm sure there's like a total conversion Dude, mod or something out there. That man ain't from around here. Fifteen dollars, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it was on sale I'm recently saying, for like way cheaper. But I think that sale's over. Right Would we? Uh, welcome back, Sword Thumb. The core survives as well. Damn it! I wanted to go through those guys, not stuff on them. Oh god, stop it! The the roll move can be a little finicky sometimes. Like sometimes it rolls in a way you're not expecting it to. Like when I'm holding shift and I'm locked onto something in this direction and I'm moving backwards and I hit space, sometimes it'll roll towards the enemy instead of away from the, the enemy, even though I'm walking backwards. I had an issue viewing earlier, so here I am for a bit. Yeah, is, Twitch, is Twitch being wonky for anyone? He does what he has to do. Seems like a lot of people are dropping in and out of the chat room. What do Sword Thumb says he, he was having an issue watching the game. Kid hasn't a clue, but he says this. This, this is Zolf. He's the first of two survivors that you meet. Oh, he was using his mobile device. Oh, Morris Raccoon is playing the Binding of Isaac. His name is Zolf. You can't see that in the uh, the stream window, but it just popped up in the uh, in the Steam overlay. He is relieved to see a living face or two. The kid and I introduce ourselves in kind, both to him and to each other. The characters in this game have kind of a weird chibi aesthetic. Sort of chibi. Like, they're really stout. We fought the Earth. But I like it. But that was the, the art in this game is really cool. Things are different between us now. For <sighs> Zolf, Ceylandia was like a second home. He's real worried about his first home, too. Far to the east. All right, let's uh, slot this new core into the monument. The cores, they remember. That's why this place is coming together. That's why things are gonna be all right. Oh, I forgot to, uh, to talk to him about this. The Euro sent him on a mission of peace to our city, and he's lived here ever since. I hope the audio is okay, by the way. Well, look, look, I have the uh, the fan on again, but I tried to position it 
in a way that isn't blowing directly into the mic. Again, once I get my uh, my new mic, once I get my mixer so I can start using my new mic, it shouldn't be as much of an issue because it uh, it's a condenser mic, which means unidirectional. Should be a lot better about uh, about filtering out outside noise. Sounds good on my end. Okay, good. These are the uh, the achievements that you can get. They're, they're called vigils, and uh, apparently the new game plus unlocks a lot more of these because I didn't have this many uncompleted vigils when I finished this game the first time. Uh, I completed this one, which is just building the uh, the memorial. So I get 250 for that, just and this is the uh, the hammer one that I unlock, and you get 500 for that. We built the city strong. Now there's only two of us. So here's what I have left. I have to earn first prize on the required number of proving rounds, which I did the first time through. Weird. I guess I guess the first time through it says zero out of seven. So I guess the first time through you can get one achievement by doing seven of them, and then the second time through there, you have to do seven more to get the uh, the other achievement. I think. I know I did one of those, though. Weird. But, uh... Gain the required number of mementos. See, I did that one, too. Uh, yeah, those four are four that I picked up on the New Game Plus thing. I don't know why some of these are carried over from the last playthrough, and some of them aren't. Uh, the Fang Repeater, defeat a hardy foe with a last bolt and a clip. Yeah, I haven't done that. A lot of these are weapon-based. Um, quickly put 12 bullets in a single foe without missing. Yeah, see, I, I know I did that one. Weird. Oh well. I won't worry too much about these. They're just uh, a nice bonus. I mean, I don't even have anything to spend my money on at this point, since I haven't unlocked the shop or the uh, or the forge. Yep, still just level Old six. Brandy is thicker than paint. Makes your skin feel as tough as knife bar. All right, uh, Pith Orchard or Cinder Brick Fort. We have a few more proving rounds unlocked around here, which I'm not going to bother with. Get the Ring of Fire. Oh yeah. Thanks for the reminder. I mean, I don't know if Ring of Fire is actually the best skill. Uh, it's just the one that I'm most familiar with. This one, like, immobilizes enemies around you. This one puts up like a shield around you temporarily that reflects projectiles. Uh, this one's this one's actually kind of funny. The sneaky decoy. It creates a uh, like a little cardboard cut out of you that uh, the enemies go to that instead of attacking you. It's pretty cute. Oh, this is new. Gel canister. A viscous substance of unknown origin contained contained in the scientific apparatus. <laughs> okay. A lot of strange before, but this takes well, let's see what that does. That sounds fun. And these are all uh, weapon uh, skills for weapons that I don't have equipped, which is why they're grayed out. Alright, let's set this shit out. We tracked down a couple more cores near the edge of the city. Alright, uh, let's go to the Orchard. Squirt lore. Yeah. Sounds pretty adult. They're all undone. Pit Orchard. Places a dead end in more ways than one. Ah, uh, back with the old trusty bellows. Folks used to make pilgrimage here to pay their respects to Pith. Bowl. Oh yeah. The gods are long I have to fight now. the bull god on this one. In the orchard core, it's long gone too. The kid gives that old bull what's coming to him. The gods don't. That's one of the uh, one of the mementos, the story items. 
I remember correctly, this guy's about to come to life and kick my ass. Or maybe that's not until later. Well, no use turning back just yet. Did I miss something this way? Oh, there's another path up here. Do we? Pith stood for something once. Something real. That's the only bad thing about the uh, the way the terrain appears out of nowhere. Sometimes there's a uh, a path that you don't see immediately, or that looks like a dead end. I hate not getting bombs and having numerous things to blow up on the level. Yeah, that's pretty frustrating. Kind of funny that the night I'm not streaming The Binding of Isaac, that's what everyone else is playing. As people just can't get enough of that game. Alright, this is the one that comes to life. Then Biff lights up like a rodeo. Basically all you do is you block his attacks until he stops doing that. And then in between uh in between attacks, you just let him have it. Welcome to the chat room, Kostya. Kid breaks into bits. Must have been guarding that shrine. Holy shit, Duke, I got an exam tomorrow. What should I do? Oh my god, oh my god. Just came here to say hi. Well, hi. I appreciate it. Yes, Kibitz is correct. You should probably go study. And here's the shrine. It shows what, uh, what gods I have equipped. This is the bull god. This is the first one that you get in an actual playthrough. So it's grow quicker and move to move and strike. You don't need favors from the likes of him. Oh, more striker than Scott Brimstone. I s I've still never gotten that one. Well, if the gods are alive. Alright, let's see what this uh what the sticky stuff does. Oh It's a turret from Portal. Wow. That is cool. I didn't know that was in this game. Put another one down. Oh, it's uh, unidirectional. Well, that is that is pretty cute. I'll have to uh, I'll have to pop that down when I'm fighting a boss. Seems like it would be more useful against a single boss than a swarm of enemies. Can you tip it over? <laughs> I wonder if that's like a uh, a PC exclusive thing or a, a Steam exclusive thing. You can actually play this game in a web browser in Google Chrome. Like I don't know exactly how it works, but you can buy it from the market and play it inside the browser. But uh, the one time I downloaded it. I think it was a demo or anything. I didn't actually buy it for Chrome, but uh, I downloaded it somehow, and it didn't work. I guess it's possible it didn't work because I didn't pay for it. I don't know how the uh, the Chrome version plays relative to the version I'm playing. Yeah, I still have to play Portal 2. Unfortunately, that is one of the mini games in my backlog. Shit. Better heal up. God, ain't gonna catch you if you fall. I'm assuming that that's a portal reference, Navigen. What's the Necronomicon do? Uh, I forget. Your computer can't play it. That sucks. Trying to remember what the Necronomicon does. You know what? Let's see how this portal does against Mr. Bull. Or not the portal, the turret. Oh, I guess the bull killed it. Oh, it's a laptop. That's unfortunate.
So, uh, I guess I don't really have a whole lot else to talk about. Um, like I said, today was the last day of overtime, so I'll be getting out of work at 3 tomorrow. Which I thought I would, I would, I thought I would be working until 5 tomorrow, so it's a pleasant surprise. Even though it means 8 hours of overtime for this week instead of 10. Am I playing this with a controller? Nope, mouse and keyboard. WASD to move around and the mouse to move the cursor. I bought Deus Ex Human Revolution on sale and found out I couldn't play it. Oh, that sucks. That is a great game. At least he found Zolf's precious shrine. Do you have any uh, any consoles or anything right now, or just the uh, just the computer? Since Deus Ex is one of my favorite games, yeah, I have to go back and play the original Deus Ex. I played it very briefly uh, before Human Resol Human before I got Human Revolution. And, uh, I enjoyed what little bit I played. Oh, I said earlier that Skyrim is the first new game I bought since Doom 3. And, uh, I realize that's not true, because I bought Deus Ex Human Revolution new. And I bought Fallout New Vegas new. Like, I paid $60 for both of those games. Just the PS2 and GameCube. Damn. Well, the PS2 has some quality games. I kind of wish I had a PS2 because I've been hankering for uh, a JRPG lately, and there are no JRPGs to play on the computer, except for The Last Remnant, which I've heard isn't really very good. I was going to get it just to try it out, but it's still like 40 bucks. Cthulhu Saves the World. Yeah, I like that game. You show me whoever made this, Zolf says. <laughs> and I'll show you a scientific genius. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Zolf doesn't touch the thing. Last Remnant is awful. Is no children's toy. PSX simulator. Yeah, I could do that. I don't know. Really, I, I just wanted to play a Persona game since watching Some the Persona 4 Endurance run. World, but who are we to judge? <laughs> I like that. The Ura feared the Last Remnant is awful. Yeah, that's what I heard. Put their faces on our walls. All right. Well, I guess that last place didn't have a uh, didn't have a core either. Let's see, do I want to keep the turret? Eh. Cool as it is, it doesn't seem as useful as the uh, as the Ring of Fire. Persona Four on. PCSX on PC. I assume that's a PS2 emulator. I don't know. The last time I tried a PS2 emulator, it did not work very well. This is the uh, the proving ground for the shield. Yeah, I tried a PS2 emulator on my last computer, and it did not play at a uh, at an acceptable speed. Um, this computer is a little better than my last one, but I don't know if uh, I don't know if it would be fast enough either. I have a JRPG you should play if you can, which I absolutely love. Sure, the city marshals may be gone, but now the fort's crawling with windbags. Well, don't keep me in suspense. You know you can write more than one line at a time in the chat room, right? Oh, Skies of Arcadia. Yeah, I've heard of that. I was going to play it on the Dreamcast back when I had a Dreamcast, but I never got around to it. And I need more beverage, so I will return momentarily.
Okay, I am back. So I haven't figured out what the Necronomicon does. Use it against the boss and it didn't seem to do anything. Well, you know, you could always check the wiki. I mean, I'm not sure if you're avoiding the wiki or not, but, uh, I mean, it would definitely have it there. Wow, that did a shitload of damage. Oh my god. Oh, I should have tried to get that, uh, the achievement. Actually, I think I'll try to get that now. Alright. That's gotta be less than 20%. Alright. The windbags ain't so lucky. Uh, well, it didn't give me the achievement. So I guess that's not 20%. Oh shit. The achievement is specifically for counter blocking a melee attack in a manner that destroys an enemy. So, oh shit, I'm dead. The put the kid on so it wouldn't have worked against those, uh, against the thing shooting the projectiles. I need to play that Mother 3 translation for the SNES. It's for the uh, the GBA actually. I played I played actually a pretty good bit of Mother Three, and uh, it was really good from what I played. I'm not sure why I uh, why I stopped playing it. Oh, welcome, Gartholomew sixty eight. Sorry, I'm late. Dishes got out of hand. Well, I think you really need to get your priorities in order. I mean, clearly, a video game stream on the internet is more important than, uh, than personal hygiene. Cleanliness. Alright, let's, uh, left the for star. let's get myself down to low health. Well, I probably shouldn't try it now since I've already died once. I'll try it in the next area I go to. There's a lot of debris in the way, making it hard for me to actually hit these things. I think the copy I have was a homebrew translation for the SNES. Well, Mother 3 never came out on the SNES. It was a Game Boy exclusive. If that's what you're talking about. If you mean Earthbound, that's Mother 2. I hate 15 coin stuff on floor 1. Yeah, that's always a bummer. Yeah, if it's Mother 3 on the SNES, it's either a pirate or a... I don't know, a hack of some kind. Not a pirate, but a, uh... I mean, it would have to be a hack. So hopefully, I have my mixer and stuff by the time I do the next stream. Uh, next stream will be Sunday if I can figure out something for the three of us, me, Moores, and Navigem to play. Uh, or if, if we can't if we can't figure something out then uh, then it'll be Tuesday. No tabletop this week? Um no, not on Sunday, no. Alright. <clears throat> I guess I got everything down here. Feels like I'm missing something for some reason. Well, windbags, young and old, keep fighting for the fort. Yes, I did notice Namajem. Very clever. Did you know that the Pokemon Arbok? That's why. Shit. Got such a bad reputation. I didn't think that would actually kill me. The Pokemon Arbok is Cobra spelled backwards, and the Pokemon Ekans is Snake spelled backwards. 
the more you know. City marshals maybe gone. I shouldn't have done that. I was trying yeah, to get the. Uh, I was trying to get that achievement. Let's uh, let's kill some of this little stuff and see if I can uh, see if I can do it now. Right, kill the big one. Oh no! I guess the big one's the only one that's left. Okay. So I have to get below 20% health. Shit. I think. Oops. All right, that's gotta be less than 20%. All right. So all I have to do is block, block an attack or counter an attack and kill them with the counter. So I'll kill one of these guys normally. I'll kill this guy normally. Shit. Oh god. I'm getting in over my head. Okay. All right, kill those guys. Now I have to counter kill this guy. All right, one more. Got it. So lucky. Completed the menders. Defeat a foe by counter blocking its melee attack while at less than twenty percent health. Sweet. You'd be surprised how many people noticed all of a sudden. Just trying to get it out of the way. No, I, I realized that. Pretty much the first time I saw your name. Why'd you decide to go with that instead of, uh, Mrs. Pitlick? Or however if that's supposed to be pronounced. Because last time you came to the stream, you were, uh, you were in Mr. Mrs. Pitlick. Look, it's a made up word. There's no correct pronunciation for a made up word. I say Mrs. Pitlick. And if that's not correct, then. Oh well. The windbags put the kid on notice. Ah, uh, Morse Draconis died. As did I. They've been left to freeze or starve. But I should probably make it. I should probably be able to make it through this level, the rest of this level, without dying again. Hopefully. Even if I do, I don't think it'll cancel out me getting the, uh, the achievement. I actually had this name before Mrs. Pitlick. <laughs> yeah, my game is way... The game I'm playing now is way more forgiving than Binding of Isaac. That's for damn sure. Although... Man... If you equip all those stupid idols, I can easily see this game being way harder, th way harder than BOI. I mean, it's already pretty damn hard, and I only have three idols equipped. And there's ten you can potentially equip. All right, let's take out this last turret thing. I keep forgetting about my secret skill. Although I guess it wouldn't have really been that useful in this situation. Damn it, would you die already? Thank you. This name came from an ill-advised attempt at a sprite comic because I read Bob and George. Oh, I remember those days. I think everybody our age tried to make a sprite comic at one point in their lives. Well, windbags young and old keep fighting for the fort. At least the marshals left the kid a parting gift. All right, and oh, the windbags just the scrap musket. I actually like this weapon pretty well. It's a uh, it doesn't have much range, but it does a lot of damage and it has a lot of spread. All they want is a warm place to stay. I forget what upgrades I have equipped to it at the moment. But it's pretty nasty. I don't know if it's as good as the, uh, well, I know it's not as good as the Calamity Cannon. But, uh, at this point in the game, the, the first time I played through, I, I kept the Scrap mus Musket equipped for a pretty good amount of time. Alright, see you later, Morse. Enjoy Diablo 3. 
as much as you can. You see, uh, Mortis and I, we have very different experiences with Diablo 2. I played Diablo 2 for maybe six hours straight one day because I was at a relative's house and there wasn't anything else to do but play Diablo 2. And that's pretty much all I played it. And Morris, he played online and he put, I mean, at least, I don't know, in the hundreds of hours into Diablo 2, it would have to be. No ride for me tomorrow, probably can give me a ride home tomorrow afternoon. Well, that'd be cool. I'd appreciate it, if not, no biggie. Uh, let's see, what do kibbits get? <laughs> this old man miss, missed the spray comic era. How old are you, kibbits? At least 150 hours, more says, yeah. He played the shit out of, out of Diablo 2. Which, I can understand why he wouldn't want to play Diablo 3. But me, since I don't have the, uh... I don't have the experience with Diablo 2 that Moore's does. I don't know. It might actually be worth it for me to get it. Oops. There's a hole there. I don't know. Again, I I'll wait and see what Torchlight 2 is like. But, I mean, I heard something earlier uh, that indicates that Torchlight 2 doesn't have any single player. And if that's the case, I'd be pretty disappointed. I mean, everyone, uh... I like Diablo 1 a lot more. Seriously? Oh, uh, welcome to the chat room, Dominator Don. Oh, Kibitz is 34. Wow. I always assume I'm the oldest person in the stream. But, uh, apparently there are some... some older fellows that enjoy the stream as well. I'm going to refresh stream sync problems. Oh, that might it might be happening because I'm clicking out of the uh, out of the bastion window. How old am I? I'm 26. I turned 27 in uh, two weeks, and uh, I turned 27 on June 3rd. However long that is. Uh, welcome to the chat room, Galen O'Reilly. Another regular. Glad you can make it. 17 days, so yes. Stairs, I'm good at math. Trip. Wind bags can't use the Marshall's well, I wasn't sure if May has 30 days or 31, so leave me As alone. The wind bags, I turned 20 in 9 days. Oh, metal congratulations. I feel that money finally has actual value compared to Diablo 2 where I had tons of gold and no use for it but repairs. <laughs> Hawks was getting AARP information addressed to him. Look I mean, that's not necessarily because you're old. Can't blame him for one, though. I was worried you'd have wrapped up by now. No, the usual uh, time schedule was seven to nine. And uh, if I if I'm streaming at different times, then uh, then I'll usually announce it. Although sometimes, with, when I'm playing Binding, Binding of Isaac, uh, if I beat it, I'll wrap up early. Oh, I probably should have switched back to the Calamity Cannon at the Arsenal. Is it too late for me to go back to that? Probably. I think that part of the level fell out of, fell out of the world. So many of those sorry things hold up inside that old Wasn't there one moderately high profile game that came out on the same day as Diablo 3? Uh I know Max Payne 3 either comes out on the same either came out the same day as Diablo or it comes out like a few days after Diablo. Um I can't think of any others. Ma Max Payne 3 is supposedly pretty good, but I never played Max Payne 1 or 2, so I'll probably never play 3 either. I really need to play more Rockstar games. The only Rockstar game I played, I played like Grand Theft Auto San Andreas very briefly. And, uh,. From what I've heard, their games in this generation of consoles have gotten way better. Mainly just Red Dead Redemption. That's the Rockstar game that I want to go back and play. Because I heard that game's awesome. I don't think that's actually out on PC though. Which is unfortunate. Kids. 
is blasting everything in sight with that newfangled musket. I love my newfangled musket. The best Rockstar game was table tennis. Wow. Oh, that Game of Thrones game is supposed to be out this week. I would love to see a PC port of Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, me too. I mean, I think it's likely to happen at some point. Don't all Rockstar games eventually get PC ports? Sometimes it just takes a while. I mean, I know, uh... L.A. Noir got a PC port. That That's a Rockstar published game. That's one that a lot of people weren't sure if we would see it on PC or not. Yeah, I, I like the musket, but yeah, I think I'll stick with the uh, the calamity cannon. I have to shoot this guy like three, four times to kill him. Plus, I mean, that's just the most badass name for a weapon ever. I mean, the Calamity Cannon. I wish I had a Calamity Cannon in real life. Or a Doomsday Rifle. Have I played Dragon Age at all? I have Dragon Age 1 and I played it for like 15 minutes, maybe. If that. But I really didn't understand, like, the combat in that game at all. Like, I was not doing well in the game, and I got kind of frustrated and quit. Really want to go back to that series, though. Press Q to use a secret skill. Yeah, I know. Damn it. Oh, shit. Cinderbricks got such a bad reputation. Wow. I keep underestimating how much damage these things do. Yeah, it was the PC version. Calamity is a great word that isn't used enough. Yeah, I agree. Alright, let's let's do this one more time. I probably should have restarted without the idols. The combat did not engage me. Yeah, that, that's kind of how I felt about Dragon Age Ospa. Can I restart the level from here? No, I guess not. Sure, the city marshals may be gone. I thought the controls on PC were pretty good. It wasn't a control issue as much as it was a, uh... Like, I couldn't... I didn't understand how to make my party member do what I wanted him to. Like... He was just... He was, like, running up to enemies and, like, hitting them over the head with a bow and arrow. Or, or not hitting them over the head, but, I mean, he was just rushing up into, like, a huge group of enemies with his bow and arrow. And I was like, dude, you're supposed to freaking stay back and and shoot them. And <clears throat> I mean, I I could have paused the game and like issued him commands, I guess. But I just didn't. I I, I hate those styles of RPGs, though. I hate games. I hate action RPGs where you have to micromanage a party like that. I mean, that's the reason I liked uh, I liked Mass Effect One and Two because the uh, the party AI was actually fairly good and you don't really have to give them commands except in special situations. But like, man, I should not have to issue a command to a party member to freaking stay back and shoot with a bow and arrow. I mean, that's the sort of thing that, uh, that should just be common knowledge. Yeah, it plays like an RTS with pause options and I am not a real-time strategy kind of guy. Windbag is young and old. Keep fighting for the fort. Uh, I mean, I thought the combat in, uh, in the Mass Effect games was done really well. And I thought the Dragon Age combat would be similar. But, uh... Something just wasn't really for me. Just can't handle. Something that'll punch clean through the greasy hides. Oh, shit. I was taking a drink and I did not notice that more enemies have spawned. Alright, this time I want to get my Calamity Cannon back. I'll probably have more luck now. The arsenal should be coming up here pretty soon. Yep, there it is. Oh no, I guess not. Could have been minding the business underground like in the old days.
Uh, there it is. Okay. Windbags can't use the marshals. Calamity cannon, please. And keep the ring of fire. Wow, there's a control enemy cheat code for Shining Force 2? I never heard of that. Goes back to something more in style. Yeah, the Calamity Cannon is more my style. I get out of the Citadel and then stop because the Moonlander stuff was not fun at all and very, very featureless. Yeah, the Mako in Mass Effect was really dumb, but uh, it's much worse on the 360 than it is on the PC. Uh, I'm not sure which which one you were playing on, but I didn't mind the PC stuff as much. See, it's weird. Like the Calamity Cannon does flash damage when the enemy is like a little bit away from you. But if the enemy is right next to you, then there's no splash damage on it. Kind of odd. So many of those sorry things hold up inside that old fort. Well, at least I'm grinding for plenty, plenty of money. Not a scratch on it as he presses on. The Actually, I, I don't know if you keep the money you make when you die or not. I'd say probably not, since the game's kind of unforgiving that way. I'm just going to kind of rush past the stuff since I've already retried this level twice. Yeah, definitely going to turn the idols off next time. Damn it, game, stop giving me tutorials. I know this stuff. Secured his plane gone haywire. Windbags gummed up the works. There was an option to restart without the idols. Yeah, that, that's probably what I should have done, but I wasn't thinking at the time. Kid ain't afraid of getting burned. I, I love seeing that minus 99. That's a very satisfying damage figure. I just don't do well with third person. I, I have similar problems playing Deus Ex Human Revolution. Well, I mean, Deus Ex is first person, except for when you're taking cover. And I thought the cover mechanics in that game were pretty, uh, pretty intuitive. I hate Windags. Then they bring out Glutus and Clan. Hi! Oh, You're large. Kid takes down Glutus. Maybe it was Glanton. They got something to gain, and only their sorry hides to lose. The other big fella soon joins his brother, wherever they are. See, that was like a boss, and I took him out with like, two shots from the Calamity Cannon. Or maybe not a boss, but like a mini boss at least. It was a named enemy, whatever, whatever that's worth. The windbags finally get the message. Duke, why are you so overpowered? <coughs> I didn't know until recently that OP stood for overpowered. So every time I read it, I read it as original poster. Since that what it, that's what it means in mes message board lingo. I'm like, what does he mean? That dude's the original poster. How's that a thing in a video game? The sky or original post. And now ain't nothing left for nobody down at Cinderbrook Fort. I thought they tend to use TC for threat creator. I've never seen that. Me about his own journey to the city. All right, let's uh, slot this monument in. Souls travels ain't much compared to what the kids had to go through for all this. Talk to this guy. Souls brought his antique smoking pipe all the way from the terminals. The smoking pipe is like a uh, 
like a combat Marshall trial thing. Like it's in wave after wave of enemies at you, and dignity. it's basically a way to grind for money. And there's a story element to it as well. Alright, uh, just forging the lost and found left. Uh, I'll get the lost and found for now. Alright, uh, well, I guess that's good enough for tonight. Um, I will, uh, I'll finish the new game plus on the stream eventually. I don't know if it'll be anytime soon, but, uh, yeah, uh, thanks everyone who made it, and, uh, tune in hopefully Sunday for more streaming, and if not Sunday, then Tuesday. Um, everyone be sure to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch, if you are so inclined to use any of those services, and the links to, uh, the links to those services are in the info down under the video, and, uh, I love you all, and I will see you.